Praise God. Praise God. Now, I'm going to talk to you this morning for a few minutes about the power of baptism and how it works. Praise God. And I want you to listen to this message, not through ears of religion, or you won't get a thing, but listen through ears of revelation, and you'll get something. I said, and you'll get something. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Because um, baptism is a powerful thing. When you understand it in light of what the Word says about it, and not just in light of what you've been told about it through religion and through tradition. Amen? It is a commandment to get water baptized. It's a commandment to get born again. It's a commandment to get filled with the Holy Ghost. These things aren't optional. We know we treat them optional. But you have to understand what the word baptism means in light of what the word says about it. See, the word baptism means to immerse. It does not mean to sprinkle. I got sprinkled back when I was 15 years old. But then I redid it years later when I found out that that was just, re that was just religion. You know? And then I got dunked later by, by a man of God named Pastor Abram Potts. Well, you stop and think about it. When somebody dies... You don't lay them on top of the ground and sprinkle some dirt over them, do you? No, you dig a hole. You put them six feet under, don't you? Amen? Well, see, baptism means to immerse or it means to dunk. Amen? And all these folk that are getting baptized today, they're all going to go under. Amen. Not going to sprinkle no water on them. They're going down. But the good news is they're coming back up. Praise God. Amen. And Christian said, Amen, Pastor. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And uh, Paul back there said, Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. So we're going to have a great time this morning in the Lord. And uh, your sins are going to be all washed away. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You're going to become a new creature in Christ Jesus. Now, let's start at the very beginning. Can we do that? And then we'll, we'll catch up to what we're talking about here. Go to the Gospel of John chapter 3, please. The Gospel of John chapter 3. Now, I just believe that, praise God, you're going to learn some things this morning. Now, if you never heard this this morning, then for you, I'm planting. If you heard this this morning, then for you... I'm watering what you've already heard. Your mind's being renewed to what you've already heard, amen? And faith cometh, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God, hallelujah. Water <laughs> baptism is so powerful. I've seen people go under the water and come back up speaking in tongues. And the power of God hit them. I remember Steve Herbert, our youth pastor, I had the privilege of leading, leading to the Lord years ago. He became our youth pastor at New Life. And uh, he got baptized there at New Life, up in Urbana, Illinois. When he came up out of the water, he fell out under the power. We had to, we had to hold him up. He, he just was staggering around under the power of God. See, it's a powerful thing. It's not a religious thing. Water baptism is not a religious exercise. It's a faith exercise. Now, I probably should have told Rob and Greg who we really are before they got permission to come this morning. <laughs> or they might change it. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. No, you're all welcome here. We're glad you're here this morning. God bless you both. Amen. God bless you both. Amen. All right, John chapter 3. Look at verse 1. There is a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus. He was a ruler of the Jews. So he's a prominent member of the Jewish sect, wasn't he? He was not just a nobody. He, he was a somebody. 
naturally speaking, that is. The same came to Jesus by night, said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do what these miracles but that thou doest, except God be with him. And Jesus answered and said unto him, what did he say? Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Nick, except a man be born again. Say born again. He cannot see the kingdom of God. Now that right there is the qualification to get into heaven. Ye must be born again. Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit. Say, of the Spirit. He cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Now, being born of water represents man's natural birth. Being born of the Spirit represents the new birth. We, so in other words, we come into the earth through the womb of a woman. But now, to get to heaven, you must be born again. What does that mean to be born again? It means to be born from above. It means to be born of the Spirit of God. It means to be recreated in Christ Jesus. Now, this happens, it has to happen, before you get water baptized. Hello? Come on now. Amen. Now, what are the steps? To get born again. What are the steps? Are the steps? Yep. And the Bible gives them to us too. Go to Romans chapter uh, 10 please. Romans chapter 10 and the apostle Paul, the greatest apostle of faith who ever lived, um, gives us the steps in how to get born again. Romans chapter 10 verse 8. But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth, and in thy heart, that is the word of faith. Say the word of faith. The word of faith which we preach. So Paul was a word of faith preacher, was he not? Now, I've been accused before of being a word of faith preacher. Well, Paul was too. See, I plead guilty to the charge. I'm in pretty good company then. Because Paul was a word of faith preacher. I mean, would you want to sit under a preacher that preaches doubt and unbelief? Huh? I mean, I said, are you a word preacher? Well, what else is there? I'm going to be preaching the word? Huh? That's how you get saved. That's how you get healed. That's how you get delivered. Amen. Verse 9. That if thou shalt confess, get to confess something, with thy mouth, the Lord Jesus, oh, glory. And shalt believe in thine heart, not in your head, in your heart, that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Ain't that simple? This is not a religious thing. Get that out of your thinking this morning. Verse 10, for with the heart... Man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So, this is a faith exercise. This is not a religious exercise. It has nothing to do with being religious. I'm not all that religious, but I am a born-again Christian. I do love the Lord. Amen? I do live a holy life. But I do it by faith. I do it by living by faith in his holiness. Not by just being religious. Do you see the difference? Hmm? So, get born again then. Number one, you have to believe in your heart. That God raised Jesus from the dead. And with your mouth, not just think it. With your mouth, you confess Jesus as your Lord and as your Savior. Can you say amen to that? Amen. And both steps are done by faith. 
When somebody does this, they're born again. They're born from above. They're born of the Spirit of God. And they become baptized into Christ and are heaven bound. This, my brother and my sister, is the first baptism. There are three baptisms talked about in the New, in the New, New Testament. Number one is water baptism. I'm sorry, number one is being baptized into Christ. And then number two is water baptism, which is simply this. It's an outward demonstration of an inward revelation. We're being identified with Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection when one gets water baptized. Then number three, the third baptism, is the baptism of the Holy Spirit. So the first baptism is when you're baptized into Christ. Second baptism is when you're identified with his death, burial, and resurrection through water baptism. The third baptism is when you get baptized into the power of God. And all three baptisms, all three baptisms are a commandment by our Lord. Not, none are optional. You can't get to heaven without being baptized into Christ. You can't get the power of God in your life without being baptized in the Holy Ghost. You all need the Holy Ghost. Amen. You can't live this Christian life today without the Holy Ghost. Glory to God. I said glory to God. Now, go to uh, Mark's Gospel, chapter 16, please. Mark, chapter 16. Now, Jesus here has already died, shed his blood, was buried, was, was raised from the dead. And now he's returned to the disciples. He appeared to his disciples. He gave them these instructions. Verse 15, go ye into all the world... And preach the gospel. The word gospel means good news. What is good news? Jesus saves. Jesus heals. Jesus delivers. And he's coming back soon. Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He authorized you to do this. Verse 16. He that believeth and is baptized. Say and is baptized. So it's a commandment to believe and be baptized. It's a commandment. Shall what? Shall be saved. But he that believeth not shall be what? Damned. He did not say he that believeth not and is not baptized. Not being baptized will not send you to hell. Not believing will. Hello. <laughs> Amen. So notice again in uh, verse uh, 16 that Water baptism is a commandment of God. I'm sorry, in verse 16. It's a commandment of God. Amen? Now, you got saved through the new birth. Water baptism, then, is merely an outward demonstration of your identification with Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection. Water baptism is merely an act of faith to acknowledge your salvation. Very powerful thing. Very powerful thing. Now go to Luke chapter 23, please. Luke chapter 23. Now I will not be able to exhaust the subject on water baptism. We could do a whole entire series on this. But we're not going to do that. So this is just a condensed version of a teaching of water baptism. Okay, Luke chapter 23, is that what it said? Look at verse 39. And one of the male factors, which were hanged, railed on him, saying, if thou, be this, if thou be Christ, save thyself and us. But the other answering rebuked him. She had a good spirit, didn't he? The one, the one, that, the one that rebuked him, saying, Dost not thou fear God, seeing thou art in the same condemnation? And we indeed justly, for we receive the due reward of our deeds, but this man hath done nothing amiss. 
In other words, this man had done nothing wrong. He had a good spirit, didn't he? Verse 42. And he said unto Jesus, what did he say? Lord. He called him Lord. You see that there? He said, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. Got a question. Had he been water baptized yet? He never did get water baptized, did he? And what did Jesus say? Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, to, Today shalt thou be with me in paradise. He got saved in me. Why? He made Jesus his Lord while he's on the cross. Do you see that there? Hallelujah. Glory to God. So, now then, when you truly understand about the new birth and the water baptism is merely an act of faith to acknowledge your salvation, then it's a powerful faith exercise and the Holy Spirit gets involved. Now go to the book of Romans chapter 6, please. Romans chapter 6, and read verses 3 and 4. It says, Know ye not that so many of us, as were baptized into Jesus Christ, which that's talking about the, the, the new birth there, were baptized into his death. Verse 4, Therefore, say therefore, therefore we are... We are buried with him by baptism unto de into death, that like as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. So when you who are getting baptized here in a few minutes, when you go into that water, your sin's going to be buried. Hallelujah. When you come up out of that water, you're going to feel much lighter. The heavy burden of sin is going to be lifted off of you. Hallelujah. Now, you're already born again. You're heaven bound. But now you're acting it out through water baptism. Are you, are you following me there? Amen. Now then. <laughs> Listen to this. When one approaches water baptism as a faith exercise rather than merely a religious exercise, then the Holy Spirit gets involved and seals your salvation. Last scripture. Go to Ephesians chapter 1, please, and you'll see it. Ephesians chapter 1. We're about to seal the deal here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm not saying you'll never again mess up or, or miss the mark, but it's sealed. It's, it's a done deal today. It's a done deal. Amen. Okay, Ephesians chapter 1, and uh, look at uh, verse 13. In whom also you also trusted, or in whom you also trusted, after that you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, the gospel of my salvation. In whom also, after that you believed, see, after you believed, you were sealed. After you believed, you got born again, were heaven bound, you were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. Hallelujah. Can you say amen to that? Amen. Now, those who wish to be water baptized, follow me off the stage. We got some rooms back there you can change in, into your baptism clothes. Amen. And then meet me in the clothes room on this side of the baptistry here. I'll give you some instructions before you get baptized. Okay, you ready? All right. Thank you, Father Jesus, for his walk with you, for his decision to commit his life to Jesus Christ and to, pro to profess him and confess him as his Lord and Savior. So in obedience to the command of our Lord Jesus Christ, upon your public confession of Jesus Christ as Lord, I baptize you, Christian, into Jesus Christ in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Praise God. Glory. It's all over. Glory. The weight is lifted.
identify him with Jesus Christ, with his death, his burial, and resurrection. So in obedience to the command of our Lord Jesus Christ, upon your public confession of Jesus Christ the Lord, I have baptized you, Zach, into Jesus Christ, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Oh, that's way. That's way. That's way. Amen. Praise the Lord. All right, next. Hold this microphone, make sure it doesn't fall over so Lisa can still take pictures. Thank you, Father, for Samantha. Get your right, Lisa. And Lisa, hold your nose. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father, for Samantha. Her walk with the Lord. Her commitment to follow Jesus. To identify with him publicly. So in obedience to the command of our Lord Jesus Christ, upon your public confession, Jesus Christ as Lord, I baptize you, Samantha, into Jesus Christ, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Woo! Amen. Woo! You did it. All right. Praise Woo! the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. God bless you, sister. This Amen. way. Just walk this way here. Thanks. You made it, Sam. Can you make it? Can you make it? Can you make it? Oh, yeah. She's got it. Your step. Steps are kind of slick, kind of slippery. And then turn around and face that wall. The bottom step there. Step. Yes. No, the bottom step. Yeah. And then you have to bend the knees. There you go. Oh, thank you, Father, for Lisa. For her commitment to you, Jesus. To identify with you publicly, Father. For her commitment to follow Jesus. So, in obedience to the command of our Lord Jesus Christ, upon your public confession, Jesus Christ the Lord, I baptize you, Lisa, in the Jesus Christ, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Praise the Lord. You did it. Glory. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. God bless you. Amen. Last but not least, <laughs> amen. <laughs> Lord, he's a big one. Hold him under for a while, will you? Hold him under for a while. Make sure it takes. He takes. <laughs> <laughs> he made a bottom step there. Uh, <laughs> one step. Are you okay? Sure. Okay. okay. Thank you, Father, for this brother. Take your right hand. Put it on the place over your, over your nose. Over your nose. Put it. Father, we thank you for this brother right here. Brother Paul, for his commitment to Jesus Christ, to follow him and to identify him publicly. So, in obedience to the command of our Lord Jesus Christ, upon your public confession of Jesus Christ the Lord, I baptize you, Brother Paul, into Jesus Christ, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Lord, God bless you. Brother. Amen. Give the Lord praise for that. Amen. Oh, you shout it out. You shout it out. 